This is Data Citizens Dialogues, your guide to bringing trust to your data, decisions, and all things AI. For Calibra, I'm Thomas Brentz. All right, hello, hello. Here we are again, another episode of Data Citizens Dialogue. Same host, I'm Thomas Brentz, Calibra's head of portfolio marketing, and I'm thrilled to be back here again for yet another customer story. Now, like every parent, I love every one of my children or podcast episodes equally, but man, did I have a blast with this one. The team of Memorial Care, they were so much fun. The laughter, our storytelling, it continued well beyond the boundaries of the recording of this podcast. Now, let's listen in, and I hope you like this one as much as I did. All right. Hey, thanks for joining me here today. Anthony, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, what your organization does, uh, your title? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Anthony Macchione. I am the Data Governance Program Manager at Memorial Care Health Systems. We have four separate host hospitals out on the West Coast, uh, over 100 ambulatory clinics. We, again, had a work on the Data Governance Program there. Really, my objectives are making sure that we have the technology in place from a data governance perspective, uh, and then also really building the program within the business itself. Craig, same, I mean, the easiest question I'll throw at you all day, just <laughs> your name, and tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I'm Craig Hunter. Uh, I'm a solutions analyst for Memorial Care. Been there for more than 10 years, and uh, I'm kind of the utility infielder. I kind of get thrown wherever somebody's needed, and uh, the data governance program obviously started up. They needed full-time employees to come help out, and I've been, I'm the guy. I love that. Utility player. That's yeah. perfect. That's perfect. Um, tell us a little bit about Memorial Care's mission. Why, why is data so important to you? There's so many reasons. I mean, really, just our mission is to improve the health and well-being of individuals, families, and our communities. Everything's focused on the patient. So anything that we can do to use data to drive better value for our patients is a win. That is uh, our number one goal to make sure that we're doing that uh, in, in the right way and that, that data can be trusted uh, and is available to the people who need it to make decisions for our patients. How do you use data to make decisions and why is that so important? Everything is based on, on data at the hospital, um, whether it's how to, how to treat a patient, you know, based on the, the previous um, the previous care that they've received, uh, whether it's it's knowing how to treat a, a patient, you know, based on um, something that might be happening to you know a certain ethnicity more or gender, um, anything that we can do really to to perform analytics on what we've got, and then answer the questions that the that the people out in the field have, right? Your doctors and your nurses, and then also you know, I mean, we're an organization, so we we have to keep functioning as well. So we've got to make sure we've got data that's trusted from a financial perspective. We've got to make sure that we're doing everything on the quality side and, and for regulations, uh, any of that type of reporting as well. I mean, really, it's amazing to me that, that hospitals were able to function before all of this was being recorded, right? Yeah. Can you imagine using paper and pencil to try to, try to track the different symptoms that a patient has or the different type of care that they've received before? Uh, now we have access to all of that, but it's really, it's really understanding how to harness it. If you'll humor me just for a moment, if we can go back to the past just a, just a little ways, and if you would uh, just tell me a little bit about the beginning of that data intelligence journey. What, what were some of the things that were going on at your organization, maybe some of the pain problems that you were trying to solve? What was the catalyst, if you will? I really think that the data governance is people, process, and technology, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have people involved in data governance. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have all the processes outlined that we needed to so that, so that everyone was aware of what was going on throughout the organization. One of the main questions that we get all of the time is just, I don't know what data is available to me and I don't know where to find it. Um, and, that, and that's huge, especially when you think of all the different data sources out there, all the different systems that, that we're capturing things in. And if you've got someone in the organization that can't do their work quickly and effectively because they don't even know what's available to them, or they're possibly duplicating efforts, you're not making the best use of everyone's time. So that was really 
what what kicked us off at the organization to say, hey, we need to figure out how we get this the right stuff in front of the right people so they can make decisions. What are some of the groups or some of the individuals that are, say, most affected uh, by not having that access to data or analytics that they need to do their job? To me, the people that are going to be most affected um, that are our top priority is the patient, mm. right? So if, if there is anything that is holding us up from providing um, someone quality care where we, it could be more efficient and happen more, more quickly for that patient, that's what we want to do. And I really think that's, that's probably where uh, we have the most opportunity uh, to just get those frontline people, the stuff that they need to make decisions quickly, and again, the best decisions on behalf of the patients. I'm sure uh, those decisions can be affected uh, all the way up to the top, maybe mm -hmm. executives having what they need or not having what they need. Have you guys run into problems like that in the past? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's, that's really what we needed to determine was our, our focus to get data governance exposure throughout the organization, yeah. right? Because it doesn't work unless everybody's a part of it, all different parts of the organization. And, and, and that's one of the most difficult pieces. You need transparency. You need people to be able to find what's out there. But you also need them to understand what their role is in that. Um, part of that was figuring out where to start for, for us at Memorial Care. Um, what we decided to do was really leverage our analytics and data services team to kind of go out into the field and find where people were having pain points. Mm. Um, and we said, you know, sit on project groups, find out, find out what, where they uh, have data needs and why that might not always be fulfilled if there are reasons. Let's help there. Um, look at the tickets that are coming in where people are having issues with data. Let's see if there's something we can help with there. Uh, and, and even really just kind of asking leadership, what do you need that you don't have, yeah. right? Um, we were fortunate in that my boss one day emailed me and said, hey, I'm sitting in this meeting right now. There's a, a group full of C-suite executives. And one of the executives just said, I don't know what reports are available to me. I don't know where to find them. I don't know who owns the reports for my, my business area. I need, I need somewhere where I can go and just see everything that's relevant to me. Um, and that was really an opportunity for us to kind of kick the, um, that portion of the program into gear, right? Um, yeah. getting, getting the business kind of involved um, and gave us a, a singular use case to focus on. How did that affect them and their teams that they just couldn't get to these reports? What were they trying to do with it that uh, maybe they weren't able to do because they couldn't access mm -hmm. trusted data? Really, she was just trying to understand what the main KPIs were for her part of the organization. She wanted to know um, who, was, who was responsible for different kind of areas of that domain of data mm -hmm. um, and who she, be, she should be going to to ask different questions because she would be in a situation where two different people would give her a different answer to the same question, right? Yep. Uh, asking, you know, just for a, a basic metric like, what would be the, you know, this percentage that I need and then getting an answer from two different people that report to her from different business areas. Um, and, and her just wanting to understand really how that data was organized and what was available to her so that she could just go see for herself. So your boss connected you guys with, uh, with that executive mm -hmm. and then how did you start to help her? What were some of the, the early things that you did to get her what she needed? Yeah, well, number one was just making sure that we understood everything she needed, sure. right? So we, we met with her. Fortunately, she was ready to partner with us on it because honestly, it was, it was one of her priorities. She's like, I want to know uh, what's relevant to me and, and I need an easy, easy way to see it. So we met with her one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, and we discussed that. We took down all of her questions. And again, I think, I think a lot of different people can relate to this at their organization. She wanted to know where her reports were. She wanted to know who was responsible for those reports. She wanted to be able to know where those reports were actually located as well. What BI application? How do I get to this? Um, and so we just took down those questions that she, that she had and said, you know, let's figure out a way to answer them. We're fortunate to have a good core group of data governance champions within our analytics and data services area. So we brought them in after meeting with her and said, hey, this is what we need to answer, right? We need to, we need to give her a place to go. We need to tell her the, uh, the metadata around the reports that she needs to know, business owner, where it's located. Again, uh, being able to get to it. Um, and we need to figure out how, how we can provide this 
a solution to her, uh, but something that's reusable as well, because she's not the only one that's got, got the same questions. So I can imagine top-down approach, but also getting all of the players in the bottom to make sure everybody's got what they need uh, as well. So bottom up, um, to work laterally as well with the groups. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've tried every different way. Sure. So I think we, st- <laughs> <laughs> I think we started bottom up, right? So in my experience, the, the, the different ways we've implemented data governance have been inventory, everything, right? Yeah. Just, just try to find all of the different data points that are out there, all the different data sources, put it all into one place. If you put it there, then people will come. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that that's actually the, the result that, that I've seen. Sure. Um, you pretty much end up with just, you know, a bunch of stuff inventoried in a tool. Sure. Um, another way is, you know, let's get all of these different work groups stood up. Let, let's get uh, all the different business areas to come together and just talk about their, their data issues um, and, and just see where that takes us. And in my experience, that has also been a very tough hill to climb. Because you get people in a room and, and really they're like, well, I have this open ticket or, you know, this report's not done yet. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not really um, what we're trying to do is provide, you know, just, just long-term solutions to their needs. But really, I, I think that the most effective way has been, you know, determining specific use cases where data governance can really help. Um, and that has allowed us, right? So we, start, we started with the bottom up that has allowed us now to, to get to the, the, the top down, right? Yeah. Like finding, again, someone in the C-suite that's like, hey, I, I have an issue that, that I think you guys should be able to help me with. And we're like, yes, we will, we, <laughs> we promise. But we need you to be our ambassador afterwards, you know? That's right. um, a, a little bit of give and take as well. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we, we honestly, there isn't a way we aren't willing to try sure. to really just get yeah. any governance <laughs> exposure. Yeah, when we first started, we just dumped everything into it. Sure. We We, queried almost every reporting tool that we had. We got as much information in as possible, but it's all the IT folks doing it. So they're kind of like, what do I want to see? You know, not what does the executive want to see? And so it was valuable to a very small subset of the organization. But uh, obviously you're not going to get this through the organization and to the users unless it has something pertinent to them. And having this executive come on board and say, yes, I need to see these items. You know, can you do that for us? And you're like, oh, that's perfect. That, that's going to get this out to the rest of the groups. So you got kind of the governance foundation. you got policies, you got processes. Now you found a pain point. Yes. And the best part is that it's tied to a C-level executive <laughs> yeah. who really cares about this, <laughs> yes. right? So now you got your problem to solve. That's a good thing. Uh, and you know what you have to solve, right? You got to build this report catalog, right? Mm-hmm. Something that's really going to be useful to, to her as she, uh, you know, really tries to get meaning out of data and really just know where to go to find trusted stuff. To, Craig, talk to me a little bit about the steps. How do you build something like that? So our first step was to just try to identify everything that belonged into her domain. Mm-hmm. So uh, she is our, over our clinic operations. So we have hospitals, we have clinics. Mm-hmm. So we knew if we could tag everything that was a clinic operation report, that that was our first step. When we went through with our data uh, governance champions and our subject matter experts in those areas and said, okay, where are all these reports? And so we sifted through re- directories and report folders and everything that were related to uh, operations and tagged everything. We had over 760 reports. Yeah. So that's not of value to her. We, being at that sea level, like we talked about, we were able to whittle it down to the stuff that's really important to her, the high level stuff. Yep. And we had about 54 reports. Uh, Anthony was able to take that list to her and she was able to review that and was willing to review that and said, these are the 24 that I care about. Mm. And so we, we actually made a separate tag that was just her, you know, it's just like a tag for her. and. Yeah. We we're able to filter on those tags, and now we have a catalog that's custom built for her that shows her the 24 reports she's really interested in. So she gets the, the exact view of yeah. the information that's most important to her. That's very valuable. Can, can you tell me about some of the other you know, value success metrics? I mean, uh, I think the volume that you've cataloged Awesome. Uh, those are great metrics, too. Tell me about some of the success metrics, maybe, uh, of the program. One of the anecdotal mm-hmm. uh, things was 
one of the components that we capture is the URL for the report. Instead of the executive now having to say, oh, okay, I want to look at this pharmacy report and going to the tool that it's for, navigating through the tool, finding a report and launching it, she can now launch it from the catalog. Mm. And so one click in, she, so, so she can live in Calibra now. One click and boom, it takes her to the report she wants. She can see it. She's done with that. Let's go to the next report. Oh, here's a, another pharmacy report that I'm interested in. Click on that and get that information. So having that URL attached as one of the, the metadata pieces has allowed her to um, really use the tool within Calibra and not have to learn all these other tools that we had. And because the tools change. You know, we start off with SAP and SSRS and, and Tableau. We might get a different tool. And instead of her having to learn the new tool, she'll be able to just launch it from her catalog. Nice. It did, however, create another issue that Anthony <laughs> discovered. All right, tell me about well, it. Oh, now I want to I, hear. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I would think, so there's, there's mm -hmm. measurable success metrics, right? And then there's, there's also, like, some of the immense value that we got from it sure. was next steps for our program. Great. Um, when it comes to things that were measurable, usage went up immediately. So fortunately, she has been very outspoken now about our program. Mm -hmm. And she's demoed it herself in executive meetings and been like, look what I got now. So that immediately has resulted in people saying like, hey, we want that. Yeah. Um, also just wanting to see the reports that are, are relevant to her area. She spread it out to everyone in her area. It resulted in more access requests for people that didn't have access. And that actually is the, uh, what turned into a next step yeah. for us. Uh, while going through her report catalog and, and her trying to click on some of those URLs, there was one or two instances where she didn't actually have access to a report of a group that rolled up directly to her. Wow. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's issue number two that we got to solve, right? Yes. So obviously we got her access as quickly as possible. Yeah. But what we need to do as well now is if we're going to provide these people uh, the ability to find out what's out there and available to them, we need to give them the opportunity to request it as well. Um, we already have a ticket request system built out, uh, but not everybody's familiar with it. Not everybody wants to use it. There's a lot of that still like, let's just email the analytics team and ask for, for access. And that doesn't really work either, right, from a governance perspective. Um, so what we've used this as, as a launching pad for is an integration between our ticket request system and Calibra. Um, so now, if she goes in there and tries to launch a report and access is denied, from that same asset page within Calibra, she can kick off a workflow that says, hey, uh, I want access to this, yeah. right? And it just, it immediately pings ServiceNow and gets that process started, just like it would if she would have entered it directly into ServiceNow. Um, and that's really just another step towards our ultimate goal, which is, at least from a platform perspective, mm -hmm. is this all-encompassing catalog, right? We want people to go in there and just find what they need to know from a data perspective, um, where it's located, who's responsible for it, just all in one place. The other thing that it has led us to, other than just this kind of integration for access requests, is the idea of people being able to go in and being shown immediately based on role or responsibility what they need to see. I mean, if you think about it, again, from our patient perspective, if you're a nurse and you want to know what reports are available to, to your group that might be help, helpful in you know, dealing, you know, um, providing care for a patient, if you went into Calibra and immediately it took you to all the stuff that was relevant to nurses, I mean, wouldn't that be a, a beautiful thing? Absolutely. Um, so that, that has given us a clear roadmap on, on the things that we can do uh, to, to, again, help our organization and ultimately to help our patients. Well, I'll ask you each individually because it's a curiosity question of mine at this point. Uh, so here we are, data citizens, I mean, conference going around around <laughs> us as we sit here and have this conversation. Um, What's been your favorite takeaway over the, the last couple sessions, the, the, the workshops? What are some of the things that you've learned or that, uh, that you've picked up in some of the sessions that you've uh, participated in? So I, I would have to say, honestly, it's just this kind of collective agreement on how, how much there is still to learn about data governance, just overall, right? So the technology, the technology is here. Mm -hmm. right? We've got the people that understand that. We've got the people that understand the data. 
everyone that I've talked to, at least, agrees that one of the hardest parts is really just getting that engagement from the business. And it's just everyone collaborating on different ideas on how, how to get people involved within their data governance program and just, just so it can keep growing. Um, it's everyone here is just looking to provide as much value as they can to their business. Um, and there's so many just good ideas on how to do that that I hadn't heard before. My biggest takeaway has been you talk with other organizations and you find that they're all kind of in the same boat and they all have some similar struggles. Um, sometimes you think, oh my God, we're so far behind the curve on this. So there's guys doing all this fancy stuff with AI and, and mm -hmm. all this. And then you talk to the, the majority of the users they're all basically in the same spot. Like, well, how did you do that? I mean, how are you getting that done? Yeah. And it's like, no, well, we're all facing the same problems at the same time. And everybody is kind of at different stages, but you might grow in the catalog area, and but you need focus on your lineage. And then there's guys that have done fantastic work with lineage, but don't have their catalogs built out. And so, you know, there's all these different components of Kaliber that you can focus on. And it's hard to get everything going all up at the same time. You know, you need a big team to, to really do that sometimes. <laughs> and the other thing that you're learning as we talk to these other organizations is a lot of them are two to three guys and, and maybe a half FTE here sure. and there, a half FTE there. And that's how they're doing it. Well, you're learning from each other and uh, much like you're learning from the, the sessions and your interactions here. Folks are going to learn the same stuff from you guys. So I just yeah. have to thank you for participating, sharing your story. Uh, hopefully somebody um, is out there listening to us uh, <laughs> right now uh, and taking, taking notes right on, okay, I got to find an executive with a report <laughs> problem. And if I can find that, maybe I can unlock some success. So uh, just genuinely appreciate it. Anthony, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having and, us. Craig. Thank you. Pleasure meeting both of you and thanks for participating. That was an enjoyable one for me. Anthony and Craig did Memorial Care proud. Now, let's talk about the three big takeaways that I had from this episode. First, data quality can actually be life or death. The team at Memorial Care needs and demands that data be reliable, especially when lives are at stake. Second, data governance doesn't work unless everybody is a part of it. It's easy to define the pain points for needing data transparency, but it's much more difficult to get people to understand what their role is in that process. Memorial Care, they, they leveraged their data and analytics teams to go to the broader company and find out where their pain points were at. Because remember, if people can name their pain points, if they can actually say what their problem is, they're much more invested in helping you to find a solution for it. Okay, last one, trial and error actually works. The team tried multiple strategies, starting with inventorying all of their data and then moving towards bringing their business stakeholders together. Ultimately, they found the most success when they brought these two strategies together and focused on one specific use case by building a report catalog that ultimately helped their executive team. Such great advice from Memorial Care. Anthony and Craig, they were a delight to have on this podcast. I not only appreciate their time, but also yours for just continuing to join me. And for Calibra, this is Data Citizens Dialogues, and I'm Thomas Brentz. Thanks for listening. Want even more insight into managing your data? Visit Calibra.com slash podcast for additional resources on the topics covered in our show. Be sure to follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. Enjoy what we have to share. How about a five-star review? At Calibra, we absolutely appreciate your support. Data Citizens Dialogues is a production of Calibra in collaboration with Stories Bureau.